So our example is going to create a simple oscilloscope like that. So we'll end up with a scope trace uh, eventually on your TFT display that is on your board. Time will probably dictate that we won't get that far. Uh, but you have the software, you have the slides, so you can have a play around when you get back to your offices, uh, depending on how far we get during the hands-on session. So you've all got your board to do the oscilloscope. We're going to use one of the analog inputs of the STM32 to acquire the data. And then we're going to buffer that data into memory and then transmit it over serial link or virtual COM port link out to the PC. And then we're going to display it on a utility on the PC, hopefully, if the utility on the PC works. So you've already got the uh, mini cable already because that's the one that's powering your um, board at the moment. So the micro is going to use one of the USB ports that's on the device now to actually send the information back to your PC. So you've all said you've installed Cube. So I'll go through showing you how to do this first because it's a common one that uh, you don't think. So Cube is a modular system. So the CubeMX tool is the complete package that does all the um, code generation part and the nice graphical interface that you'll see in a second. The packages are what contain the HAL, all the other library files that are specific to each device. So you can load as many of these packages in as you need, depending on which devices you are using. Bear in mind, some of these devices are 150 megs when they're zipped. They extract out to be nearly 250 megs. So it will fill your hard drive up quite nicely. So has anyone got any hard drive issues? Because I've noticed uh, a few people over the last few days have. And they can't do things when their hard drive sticks a certain level. Windows won't let them. So, so please be aware of that. You don't need it at the moment, but Cube will automatically open it when we get to that point. So, so you can close it, and then Cube will automatically launch it uh, at the end of the uh, section when we generate some code. So your CubeMX interface is fairly easy. Uh, you can either load a project, start a new project, or we can go into the settings of the device. When you download each of the library packs, it creates a folder on your hard disk in users, your account name, STM32 cube, where it stores all these files. This is called the repository. So all the HAL files are in there, all the USB driver files, any of the other open source packages relative to that family end up in this repository. And when you generate your project, it copies the files from the repository into your specific project. So it only takes the files you've asked it to take into your project workspace. The other big benefit of this repository, this is where all the example code sits as well. In the GUI, you don't get to see any of the examples or any of the code. This is all hidden down in this repository. So the full example that you started with in your evaluation boards uh, this morning the binary file and the complete project as a workspace is sat down in this repository. So this repository is very, very useful for example codes on how to use the HAL libraries to get the UART to do certain things, how to get the timers to do certain things. So there's a lot of inf useful information down here in that repository that appears at normally that address there. That is the default location of the repository. If you want to store it somewhere else on your hard disk, you can change it in the settings. But it is best to leave it at the default settings, this repository. So to install the libraries, uh, you've got a copy on the zip file that you downloaded off the memory sticks this morning. If you go to the help, on the toolbar, not the one that's in the uh, GUI, help on the toolbar and install new libraries, you should get this screen appearing.
Right, your repository is there. So C, users, your account name, an STM32 cube, and repository. If you've not installed any library files, this folder will not exist. So, when we get to uh, installing this part, then you should be able to see it. So, is that the case? You've not got any files installed yet? No. Right. Okay. So, we'll go back to that in a second then. So, if you get to this new license, uh, new library manager, on your memory stick, there is a folder called HAL STM Cube Firmware Library F7 something something dot zip. You can install from local. If you tick the box here, it will go off on the internet and install it. If you click on the button right at the bottom from local, then point it to that folder and it will auto extract the zip into that repository location that I've just shown you. 